It's Vlogmas week three, AKA the last week. excited for Christina um it'd be great if there was some food on this tour <laughs> I, know. I know it's right at lunchtime so we were both like stuffing like snacks in our face before leaving like we need to survive for two hours it's not an eating tour but that would just be a nice bonus <laughs> I know I know they do have eating tours though for anybody that might be interested Today I have a little eye mask on. I actually used this one that I keep in the fridge. If you watched my bathroom cabinet video, then you probably saw this. I've really been loving this mask the more that I use it. It's the By Terry Hydro Rescue Aqua Mask. I also have the Fresh Lotus Mask in the fridge, which is great for exfoliation. A variety of different sheet masks. This is the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Instant Oatmeal Mask. I have the Fresh Vitamin Nectar Glow Water, and then the Murad Revite Elixir, and then condiments. And then here's my breakfast this morning. I made some scrambled eggs. I also have some smoked salmon with a little bit of dill, and then a little side salad. These are the toys that I ordered for the toy drive in my building. I asked for suggestions from you guys and so many of you gave really great recommendations. So with these toys, my priorities were getting things that are not gendered and also getting things that allow kids to explore their creativity. And then the last priority was also having a range of toys too. So things for little ones and then things for teenagers as well. First up, there is the Grow and glow terrarium i thought this was really cool because you get to build your own terrarium and it also glows in the dark i got the five second rule game this is something that seems to be fun for a variety of different ages i got this game which looked really fun it's disney's i found it and the game board is actually six feet long you have to work together to find the hidden items on the board. Personally, this is one that I kind of want. It's the Monopoly Riverdale, which looks so cool because I love me some Riverdale. I got a Crayola Inspiration art case. So it comes with all of these art supplies. As a kid, I loved things like this and Crayola was always the gold standard for me. I also got a Hatchimal. Then another really exciting one. I would have loved this too as a kid. This Lego kit. So this is not a kit where you're building anything specific. It just comes with a bunch of different pieces and you can build whatever you want. Then this is a box of Play-Doh. I'll just show you inside. There's a ton of Play-Doh in there in every color you could imagine. This is a game that is definitely great for older kids. This is Machi Koro. I love the original, but this is the Bright Lights Big City version because I couldn't find the original version in stock. 
This is an amazing card game. It's so much fun. It's strategy based and it's all about building a city. I also got a magnetic drawing board. And then the last thing I got, I'm not gonna take it out of the box here. This is another art kit. It comes with a a sketching notebook, watercolor paper, brushes, paints, pencils, pastels. So that is everything, and now we're just gonna take these down so they can get into that toy drive. I just finished getting ready to go out tonight. Honestly, I changed my outfit like five times before deciding on this outfit. I'm really struggling right now with winter wear in terms of what I feel comfortable in and what is going to keep me warm and what I also want to look like that day. And those two things, I'm having a hard time getting those two things to come together into one. Christina and I were talking about this yesterday actually and she made a really great point. She said that she feels like she's wearing every outfit for the first time and it really is like that. You just just don't know what the outfit is like out in the real world yet. You don't know how you're gonna feel throughout the day yet. Sometimes you just end up hating it and you end up feeling super grumpy about it. I've really just been trying to remind myself that no one is forcing me to dress this way. It is my choice and that I can always change it and to really just show up for the process knowing that eventually I will figure it out. Speaking of process, this is my bathroom right now. And I keep my makeup and brushes and makeup wipes and makeup bags in this basket. And then I keep this basket in my closet so my makeup doesn't get ruined by humidity in my bathroom. It's not affected by light at all. So it actually ends up preserving my makeup really well. Here is a look at my whole outfit that I'm wearing tonight. My favorite boots. I have on leggings. These are actually workout leggings that I never work out in and I always wear in the winter time with two layers of long underwear underneath one silk layer and one smart wool layer. I also have on my beautiful necklaces from Estee. Both of these pieces are from her collaboration with Daisy and I love them. I also have another layer underneath my sweater. So what I'm experimenting with now is how can I wear the thinner items in my wardrobe, the things that allow me to move around really easily, but also make them extra warm. And the answer is thinner layers underneath. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing. It's just a whole wardrobe experiment over here. I just came inside from Walking Tato, so I have my double pant situation on. Christina just went home, and now I have time to do laundry. And let me tell you, I have a pile to do. Let's start with pile number one. We're gonna just start off small and work our way into the larger pile. So this, I'm probably gonna have to divide up into two loads, because it's so big. What are you up to? Are you gonna come down or are you gonna stay there? What a cutie. I'm in the guest bathroom now because this is where I have stashed my Christmas presents. So I have been telling Erica not to open this shower curtain because everything that I got for presents for people is in here. I wanna start doing some wrapping, so I'm gonna go through my supplies and see what I have because my goal this year has been to not buy any new wrapping supplies, to use things that I have from previous years, and to also use reusable tote bags. All right, I got my box of supplies out. So this is a mix of holiday stuff. I also have things that I've used for birthdays and not holiday presents but this is really like maybe a few years worth of gift wrapping supplies that I have just saved and I've slowly been trying to get through all right wish me luck I'm gonna get this started I've definitely made some progress here so I think I'm gonna wrap a couple more and call it a night OMG let me tell you it has been a day 
but I will tell you everything that happened tomorrow because right now Erica and I are getting ready to head uptown to Lincoln Center to see the Nutcracker. I'm really looking forward to this because my mom and I actually saw this ballet last year. It is so beautiful. It's the classic version and it's just really Christmassy and festive. After things that happened last night and the day that we have had today, I am so ready for this. This is all of the makeup that I'm wearing tonight. I'm really not wearing that much. I put on a little bit of the Tatcha Silk Canvas and then I used my Hourglass Eyebrow Pencil Glossier Boy Brow Chantecaille Under Eye Concealer, my RMS Living Luminizer, and then these two Urban Decay lipsticks, one in Gash and then the other one in Bad Blood. I layered these two together and I really like them. I am really taking a moment to celebrate my outfit tonight. This is one of those moments where I have been able to combine comfort and warmth with how I wanna look that day and I'm feeling really good about it because that has not been the case for every other day this week. Walking up, ready to go. Oh, who is that? Who, who are you? Erica. Erica who? Erica America. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I was looking for. Also, I'm, I think, I feel like I have lipstick all over my face because my hair was blowing in the wind and catching my lipstick, so now I just feel like I have red streaks all over my face, but. It looks good. Oh, thanks, it's the new look. Yeah. It's the new look for this season. I love Lincoln Center. This fountain makes me think of years ago when I had my collaboration with Bobble Bar. I took a picture at this fountain during the day though. We're going in here. Just wanna say that we also saw a very cute Pomeranian that looks like Tina's cousin on the way here. So that was really the highlight of my evening. All right, now I can finally sit down and have a little chat with you about what has happened from Friday through this weekend. On Friday evening, after my wrapping paper session, I had a really, really uncomfortable confrontation with a man who for context was much bigger than me, probably like 6'3". It was a confrontation that was unexpected. I was totally in shock. I was afraid. I don't really wanna go into detail about what happened because I just, I don't feel comfortable. I've been sitting with this since it happened and there have been multiple things that have been bubbling up. One thing that has come up is recognizing that I'm in a place now where I have tools that I know how to use that allow me to stand up for myself and engage in, you know, confrontations like this. Whereas in the past, I wouldn't have been able to. And not that that's a bad thing or that I'm judging my past self for that, but it is a sign of growth for me and that feels really good. Also, at the same time with that, deciding to engage in something like this also requires this like scanning process that happens in the span of like a couple seconds where, you know, I'm scanning my environment. Are there other people around? How safe do I feel? Do I feel like I'm in physical danger? How much physical danger? Weighing what kind of risk I'm willing to take. Being able to recognize now in the moment how my body is responding to being harassed because that's what this was. This was intimidation, it was harassment. I was able to notice that my heart was racing and I was also able to notice when I stood up taller and I showed up for that moment. Something that I have wanted for myself is the option for this. So this really is another tool in my life toolbox. It's not something that I always choose to use depending on the situation, but when 
you know, essentially my checklist is checked and I feel like, okay, this is what I want to do. I can do it and stand in that moment. It is really empowering. This also leads to another thing that I've recognized has bubbled up through this experience and it's being aware that harassment is something that has happened to me consistently over my entire lifetime. And you know, there is an element of me being a woman. There's an element of me being a queer woman for people who may know that information, whether it's because I'm with my girlfriend out in public or however else they might know. But then there's also the other element that for so long I really tried to push away and it's the element of being mixed race. For me, because I am half white and half Thai, there is, you know, privilege that comes along with being able to pass as white in certain situations. And I would say in my experience, it can really go either way. Like I can be perceived as white, but then I've also been perceived as everything else. It is the perception of the other person and I don't know how other people are going to perceive me. It is such a complex experience to have the white privilege and the experience of a racial minority all combined into one body, into one experience. This is something for so long that I really just tried to brush off and I didn't want to acknowledge, but I can't not acknowledge that these things have consistently happened to me over the course of my lifetime not just because I'm a woman, I am a mixed race person and I don't know how other people are perceiving me. So, you know, their perception could allow me privilege and protection, but then someone else's perception could bring harassment my way and aggression my way. And I have watched this unfold with my mom so many times, like, just the last time that she was here. My mom is a person who walks around in this world with brown skin and because of that she is treated differently. English is also not her first language and to some people she has an accent and that adds in a whole other layer of racism. She texted me after this incident at the airport just telling me, you know, even with all of the progress that has been made, women, especially minority women, are treated differently. And, you know, in this specific case that happened on Friday, I don't know how this man was perceiving me, but I do have to acknowledge that this is a part of my experience. I don't really know what my full feelings on this are. I am sharing what I know now, what I am able to acknowledge now. I really think that this is a lifetime of work to figure out and it's why I love knowing about the experiences of people of color, mixed race people, because it does feel so confusing to me, especially in moments like this. And finally, the last thing that happened on Friday night, Erica's apartment door got broken down by the New York City Fire Department. I'm not gonna go into the whole story because that is Erica's story and her experience but basically there was a leak in the building. That is what ended up happening. Let's just say there's been a lot to deal with this weekend, whether it's emotionally, logistically, mentally. So today both of us have really just focused on taking care of ourselves, spending time with people that we really like and care about, spending time with each other not being on our phones a ton. That's why I don't have any vlog footage from today because I really just needed today to recalibrate, to reflect, to be present, and to really just be generous with myself and let myself have the experiences that I needed to have today. Erica brought back a surprise, AKA this adorable little mini tree. Orthopedic slippers. <laughs> Gotta get those in. I didn't think that I was gonna have a tree this year, but this is an exciting development. Plus my mom will be able to enjoy this, so this'll be really great. Meanwhile, 
Oh. Tato chewed the leg off that thing. He loves that toy. It originally started off as, I think, a bunny. Now it kind of looks like a grasshopper since it ha doesn't have ears anymore. <laughs> and now, oh, oh, it has two legs now. Oh shoot. This is a newly fallen leg along with this leg. That poor toy is losing legs left and right. Literally. All finished with yoga and I'm gonna get in the shower, make my dinner and enjoy the rest of my evening. This is my last weekly Vlogmas for this season and it has been such an incredible experience vlogging again, sharing little pieces of my daily life with you and also still having the experience of being able to be present and to take care of myself. I am sending so much love to all of you this holiday season. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. This has been such a wonderful and incredible 21 days. I can't believe it's been 21 days. It went by so quickly. I will have one last video of 2018 going up on Friday. After that, Christina and I will be enjoying a two week break and I will be returning with my first video of 2019 on January 11th. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys very soon. Bye.